Hi, everybody. It's Linda and Melissa Free Range. Hi. Thanks for coming on, girlfriend. Melissa is a past life interpreter, and um, she's done a great job. And uh, well, by the way, you. quick comment about Kyle Rittenhouse, everybody. I had predicted I'll do another video and that he would not totally get off, but he did. But I saw two, remember? So I think there's, I think they're going to sue the state more so. But his life is never going to be the same. I mean, it's not. And he know, broke down and cried. Home, when he was home during this trial, he posed with the Proud Boys. And he's going down that tunnel. And, it, and his mother is something else. But There's I want to know of how you can shoot someone and put them down, shoot someone and break their pelvis, and then go up to them and shoot them three more times till they're dead. And you consider that self-defense. Doesn't make any sense. So obviously the conceptual feeling about everyone is they're probably nationalists, just like that judge was. They were looking for a reason to say not guilty. They felt sorry for him. That's what I heard, uh, I could see. But I thought he was gonna be found guilty because I saw him crying. I saw a vision of him crying. I said, oh, he's found guilty. But what it was, he was crying with relief. So they had to help him to his seat. I just saw that later. He was so shaken and barely standing and they got him to sit down and they calmed him down. So, okay. And the civil suits that are coming. Civil suits are coming, but yeah. it's not going to be the same for him, you guys. There's, you know, justice always does happen. And I feel like he might get into something that's not good for him and continue down that path. Like he had a chance, look like OJ. OJ had a chance. What did he do? He went down that hill to where he literally self-destructed. So, okay. And remember that other guy that didn't he kill a man because he thought he was an intruder? And uh, he was a white guy. He killed a black man and he thought he was an intruder. And then he ended up doing something else after that. I think he's in jail now because they just don't stop is what happens. Then he'll think he's a hero. You know what I'm saying? You get all caught up in your ego. Anyway, thank you guys for all your comments. And I wanted to say to you, because she's saying some interesting stuff. I wanted to say to you, someone wrote about Paul McCartney. Did you look at that at all? Yeah, I oh, did. did. Oh, I didn't, I didn't ask my guides about it. Oh, you didn't? I, well, I, I, when I do these readings, I'm really careful about who and why I ask what I ask. Mm -hmm. They and were just so my guides will only lives. give me information on on who they want to give me information. It's something to do with timing. It's not that I would never ask about Paul, Paul McCartney, but it's a it's a big deal to to do that for me. And I I really go down a maybe a rabbit hole. I would say where I am. I I, I, I was saying this to you earlier, Linda, that I will argue with my guides. I would I will say no way that is that can't be the reincarnate or the past incarnation of this person. But when they insist, I will look, I'll start researching their lives. I'll look at pictures and anybody who's seen my past life videos will see that I always start the beginning with a, a montage of pictures where I compare um, if, if there are pictures of or photographs of one person to the, uh, the next person. It's amazing when I start seeing the similarities, you, you will see passed on through past lives, similarities in the eyes or in the face, or sometimes they look almost identical. Uh, so I've, so seen that. I've seen that, but I really, Stacey Abrams, I really got a hit. She was George Washington. If you look at her face. Her yeah, face I, else. so I, I made a list out of all the different past life videos I've done on uh, political and uh, famous figures that are on my video. And I thought it would be interesting to read through them and, and let people know, not, not to go into depth in, with any of them, but who I read on and who my guides show me that they, and I always say grain of salt were in their past lives. And right. I did get a hit that Stacey, Stacey Abrams was, an, uh, or isn't an incarnation of Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay. And I'm not saying she wasn't, a, um, a reincarnation of George Washington, but that that is what th that lifetime is what my guides felt was most relevant regarding uh, what they wanted to inform us of. Wow! And so that that video is um, let's see, Stacey Abrams. 
Oh, I'll, I'll find I'll find it and, and let you know in a second. I don't want to take take up too much time. I I know I I put it down here, but anyway, it, it, trust me, it's it's a video, one of my videos, and it's an interesting video. And if you see their facial features, they actually are very similar. And uh, the things that Eleanor Roosevelt campaigned for, who she was, it resonates so much with who Stacey Abrams is. It's kind of remarkable. Um, and, and so on the opposite side, so to speak, of like, you know, Stacey Abrams is amazing and just this bright light. So the, the, the dark, the dark of the dark, Vladimir Putin, in my most recent past life reading, my guides showed me, and I did this on Halloween, which I thought was at uh, Adolf Hitler. And it, I didn't believe it. I argued with my guides. I, I said, there's no way. But then I started comparing their lives and their lives are very similar. And their photographs, if you go, and that's 162, number 162. Um, you will see that there, there's a lot of facial similarity and even poses that are identical. Uh, uh, that they, there, There's one of uh, Putin leaning against the tree. And then I found one of Hitler leaning against the tree, almost identical. In, in the same pose in, in a woods. And then um, there is another past life I also read, my very first past life I read on a, uh, Vladimir Putin, which was uh, the Duke of Luxembourg from the uh, Louis XIV court. And he was a pretty dark character, but it's interesting, one of my um, viewers, they mentioned that they had been shown that Vladimir Putin's past, had a past life um, as Vlad the Impaler. Well, I got that too before I started this, uh, my channel. And I saw it, I saw it like a movie. I, I saw him walking through a cemetery as a, a young teenager and almost being having a walk-in of a demon or something like that. I, I saw that so clearly. And, uh, but when it came time to do the video of him, that's not what my guys wanted me to do it on. They wanted me to uh, uh, show or present him as a, a reincarnation of, of uh, the Duke of Luxembourg. So it, it's, it's really up to the guides, you know. If, but if, do you want me to read through my list? Sure. Okay, <laughs> these are all on my channel. So my channel, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Melissa, Free Range Psychic, and you can just find me under that on YouTube. Okay, and, and, and how do they book an appointment with you? Oh, so Psychic. you, I, I, um, if you go to my channel, in, my, this, in the description box, and also at the very end of the video, at the very end of my videos, I always put in a musical interlude. <laughs> and at the very end of that, there's a card. So I'll give you the information though. My email is sacredfirepsychicreadings at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, and I'll also give you um, my business. Is it okay to give, give my business phone number? Because people Absolutely. can- Absolutely. 734. Oh yeah, go ahead. 773. 9758 and you can text or call and to tell you the truth it's a lot faster for me to get back via text but if you need to call if you don't you have only have a landline that's fine i'll return that 734 773 9758 okay i'll put it in uh, the box below oh and i also ha I have a um facebook channel uh, sorry facebook page Sacred Fire Psychic Readings. And uh, I'm on Twitter as Melissa Free Range Psychic or at Range Psychic. So th those are different ways to get in touch with me. Okay. And that's how you book a reading. Or, and I will get back with you <laughs> and we'll set something up. Okay, let's go girlfriend. Okay, so this is my list and grain of salt. I am just proposing this as a possibility Okay. I'm not saying this is absolute, uh, you know, written in stone. So just take it like that. And if, if you're interested, go watch those videos and you let me know what you think after I make my presentation. So I started the list with Vladimir Putin. I uh, did one just before him as uh, oh Donald Trump <laughs> as a, a reincarnation of the Nazi Ernst Rome. Oh, wow. That's number 155. <laughs> I know. And you should see those uh, photographs compared next to each other. It's crazy. Uh, 154, Nancy Pelosi as a reincarnation of Luc Lucretia Mott, famous right. feminist. 
Melania Trump, that's one, uh, 158, whoops, <laughs> she's out of, out of sequence. Uh, Melania Trump and my guide showed me that she was a reincarnation of the French courtesan, actually born in England initially, but became a courtesan in France, very famous Cora Bell. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, this one is, um, uh, everybody's talking about this guy right now, Paul Gosar, 151. Oh my God. My guide showed me uh, that he was reincarnation of Hermann Goring. I don't know who that is. Bad Nazi. A bad um, Nazi, okay. Bad Nazi. <laughs> um, then uh, 146, uh, they showed me Steve Bannon was a reincarnation of the Confederate James Orville Shelby. Wow. Uh, he's, he, he, he was a general and he's a bad dude. He's an interesting person to learn about and then you can kind of see the comparisons. Um, so 143, Anthony Fauci reincarnated as the founding, or sorry, uh, the reincarnation of the founding father and signer of the constitution, Dr. Benjamin Rush. Okay. But this is all history lesson, right? As we're going yeah, through I'll this. Yeah, i have to look all these people up. And uh, uh, again, I wanna say these are just one incarnation of this person. We incarnate many, many times, many times. through our lifetime. So if, if you were thinking, oh no, I thought he was a reincarnation of this other person. Well, he may have been. Yeah, uh, but um, this this uh, is uh, my guys are just showing me one particular life. Marjorie Taylor Greene, <laughs> in reincarnation of the infamous Nazi Ilsa Koch. What do you think about that? One thirty nine is the number. One thirty, Katie Porter, famous early feminist Millicent Garrett Fawcett. Ooh. Louis Dij uh, her name is Millicent Garrett Fawcett. Oh, so they all take female bodies? They don't, I know you. And then, no, I'm, this is just past, this is just one past yeah, lifetime. Past okay. This is just how it worked out. And, and I guess it is, seems like that, but I, we all have a reincarnations uh, of the opposite fine. gender. I do see though in some incarnations or I feel like in my own too, that I was probably mainly female. I definitely have memories of being a male, but not many times. So okay. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I've heard other people I read for say that, that they were sure that, you know, that the, the majority of their incarnations were either male or female. But um, that's a mystery. For, I asked my guides more about that. So, um, uh, and, and Millicent Garrett Fawcett, she was an amazing woman, but people don't really know about her. So she's really, uh, important and interesting to research as a feminist. And she worked with Elizabeth Cady Stanton and, and those uh, other feminists. Louis DeJoy, infamous Nazi Theodore Eicke, 125, 124, Senator Ted Cruz, who do you think he might've been? Uh, my guides say that in uh, the incarnation, well, they showed me the incarnation of Ted Cruz as General George Pickett, a Confederate general. Senator Josh Hawley, 123. Confederate General Robert E. Lee. <laughs> and if you go look at that, you'll see there's a lot of similarities. It's crazy. Uh, Kamala Harris. And that is number 122, Queen Maud of Norway. Mm -hmm. Wow. 101, Michelle Obama. My guide showed me she's a reincarnation of Eugenie McCormick Blaine, who was a social reformer in the early 19, uh, in the early 20th century. Oh. So, and there wasn't that much space between those lives either. Right, right. Uh, Acacia Cortez, uh, 100, famous feminist Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> well, she's an orator. She's very good, like, uh, like uh, Stacey Abrams. Yeah, and she has she's CBA. They hate it that they hate it that she's so eloquent. They hate it. They do. They do. She's like enemy number one. And look at what Gosar's anime. And my God, that she should get a restraining order out on on, on Gosar. Right. Uh, William Barr, number ninety five, Turkey Amada from the Spanish Inquisition. Wow. <laughs> and they look alike. They really do. Uh, 92, Elijah Cummings. My guide showed me that one of his incarnations was as William Livingston, who was a signer of the constitution and the first governor of New Jersey. Oh. 
Barack Obama. Okay. Number 94, we're coming to the end of the list here. Uh, he was a prime minister of England in the late 1800s, Earl Grey. And that, the, there's an interesting as story as with as him. The T. Earl Grey, one of my yes, favorites. as the T. Earl Grey. And there's there's a lot of interesting stories behind him, and uh, uh, I won't go into it, but I explained it on that on, on that video. Matt Gates, <laughs> number eighty six. I know. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Edward Spear, Nazi designer of the concentration camps. He was who? Hmm? He was the architect Albert Speer. Wow. Designer of the concentration camps. Stephen Miller, 85. The Nazi Joseph Goebbels. That better that propaganda. Makes, huh? That makes sense. And then last but not least on this list, I can't believe I haven't done a past life in Ivani, uh, Ivanka yet. That's going to be next. Jared Kushner, nobody famous, nobody I could find pictures of, but my guides showed me that he was an Ita a female Italian prostitute and murderer in the 19th century. He, he and his, he and or her and her pimp would target uh, rich tourists and, and murder them and steal their money. Dang. <laughs> so there you go. And all of these can be found on my channel. Uh, I, I don't mind if people argue with me or don't believe them or whatever. It's just a suggestion. It's a story yeah, that and it's really hard me. to prove too. Oh it's, yeah, you can't really it's prove hard, it. hard about past lives because it's like, it's how do you prove it? Yes, um, but the other thing is, so I do do help uh, people. I don't do I don't do past life regression, but I do work uh, like you do. I think uh, let my guide show me the Akashic records and read on their past lives. And so, which will offer some healing for them. Yes, it does. There were many, many questions about that too. People asked if I have an illness or an injury or a birthmark or something like that. Is that indicative of something that might have happened to me in past lives? And almost inevitably, yes. Yes. And I've had a gal I just read and she had this awful pain in her inner thigh and the doctors can't find nothing and all this. And I just heard it as clear as day. I said, oh, that's a bullet wound. You were shot at this age when it came up because there's no rhyme or reason for it. And so I noticed that a lot of these phantom, even all of a sudden at a certain age, you get a fear of something that you never had a fear before. It means at that age, you went through something or you died in that plane crash or whatever. But um, yeah. yeah, it's like it's written in your DNA. It is, yeah. And oftentimes, if especially if you either maybe you uh, were paralyzed and it changed your life in a really um, dramatic way where you never were the same or you died in in like in that in a in a tragic way, that trauma is still there and it it needs to be healed in this lifetime. It needs to be worked out because it, that that just like any kind of trauma, it needs to be assimilated and processed. It's still hanging around there, and so that's why it comes in to the next life because it, it, it needs to be resolved. It needs to be healed. Right. I think. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Um... Um, what was going to ask you, what about love relationships? Do you notice a lot of people get together because of love relationships? Yeah. Oh my God. Almost inevitably on that too. Oh my, all these karmic relationships. Oh yes. It's very, some, some of it is ugly, huh? <laughs> it's, yeah. But it's incredibly empowering and healing when the past life relationships are revealed. It can set people free. Okay. Here's a good question from Ella. Can you explain the concept of us being our own ancestors? So when we include our ancestors in our prayers, does this mean we are also praying to our oversoul? Huh. I think that's an interesting question. I'm going to ask my guides. I'm going to use my pendulum because okay. I can say what I might feel about it, but what do the guides say? So okay. I use, I'm just going to use my pendulum to talk with them. They're saying no. Okay. They're saying our ancestors are those uh, others. I thought that like we're all one. We're all collective soul here. But when we pray to our ancestors, we pray for, for those who have 
passed on to the, the spirit world, but are still existing in our own world. So they're, <laughs> they're adamant about that. They're, they're saying, no, we're not, when we, when we give thanks to the ancestors, we're really giving thanks to the ancestors. But there was a kind of another question, which was, are our ancestors um, always the same people? Are there other people from other lifetimes that come in as guiding spirits and, and spirit guides? And I say yes to that, because I've seen that a lot just in my readings. So you can have a, you can have a, a ancestor spirit with you that might've been your grandmother in another lifetime. They're not uh, related to your soul family right now, but they were certainly when you had that lifetime okay. and they will come in and they, they will guide you or they will watch over you. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Hey, um, this is a good question from Five Paces. Um, when doing past life regressions, do all past lives impact the current life in one way or another? or do specific things impact the current life? Also, how do you move past the subconscious mind to the actual person who you were? I've listened to, listened to some online regression and I noticed there are many people who say that they were Cleopatra or Nef Nefertiti. 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 Anyone can be these people. So what's going on? Thank you. Well, first of all, I don't do soul uh, past life regressions. I, that's where I, I believe, and I've never, I don't believe I've ever had one myself. That's where people go into a trance. I can't be and, put under, so. <laughs> I, I've never let myself be put under. I, I do hypnosis. I, I have hypnosis. I, I do hypnosis to other people, but, um, or I have in the past, but uh, so I can't really speak to that because I just don't have an expertise with it. But when I'm looking into the Akashic records with my guides, uh, what, what, what I do see is, um, or, or why they, okay, I'm going to reframe that. What, what, why they bring up a past life at any given time, because when I start a reading and my guides want to go there, or somebody has a question, they will bring up usually three past lives that they think are important to the person at this particular juncture. So whatever significant event or events happen in that past life, and they'll always take me to a year are overlapping on something that's going on now. And so that might, that what that means is maybe when those things are resolved, there'll be three other past lives that they might bring up or uh, other parts of that past life that um, are significant at that time. Um, at, at the same time, I think all past lives absolutely have to impact on us. But I, I think that if you look at astro astrological wheels and the way that transits work, uh -huh. At any given time, we're going to have a planet that's going to make an uh, possibly an important aspect to to our our sun or our Mercury or Venus, and that is going to bring up a, a karmic lifetime, a karmic lesson that we work out that comes from another lifetime. But uh, it, I think I think it can, it, it is very specific. At the same time, if again looking at the astrological chart, our natal chart is is the sum total of everything that we have. Go, uh, gone through all our karma and our evolution that comes into this lifetime as a, as a natal chart. So I think if, if you look at it like that, how astrology works, I think that explains it better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. And there's more. Somebody, I mean, there's somebody more. just said um, chronic illnesses. Is this a consequence or maybe a carryover from another lifetime? I often wonder oh, yeah. why some people suffer so much. And you yes, know, you could have created some sort of bad you could have been an emperor and required people burned at the stakes. So then in one of your lives, you're going to suffer physically. Well, we have to look at it. Everybody's different. So what I, if somebody wanted to read it with me and I, they had that question, I would ask my guides about it. And then they would tell me, uh, or hopefully, you know, be able to show me, show that person where that came from. And then we would work it out. I, well, I never assume anything until my guides show me, because I really don't know. It's, all of this stuff is what my guides show me. Or right. what and I think you know, they're right, showing me. The, the source yeah. always gives us free will. So oh, free will. Yeah, free option. will is always interacting. Right. So you have the option to stand up to the so, plate or not. So potentially, yes, I would say there's a potential for that with that question. But I don't, I couldn't say for sure because I would have to ask the guides about it. Right. Here's a good one. Jane. Hi, Linda and Melissa. I was raised in a classical music environment, but as a baby, 
moved my arms to music like Boeing, a violin. Was this learned in my current life or was I a viol violinist before? Potentially she could have been a violinist, but I, I, I would have yeah, to ask the guys. It, but, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. It's a, it, there's a potential for that for sure, yeah. Okay, and then I don't know if you get into animals crossing over, but they-, they I do, yeah, I do. Is there karmic relationships between animals and human? Oh yeah, I believe that, um, I, I believe this with my own animals that they've been with me in other past lifetimes for sure. And they're still with me. I know they're still with me. And I, I have intense dreams of them as if they're really here. I wake up and go, <laughs> they, right. they were just here. Yes, I do believe that. Yeah. Um, and someone wrote, um, did, did you look at McConnell, who he was in a past life? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, hold on. I, 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 I typed this all up, but I, I missed a couple. But McConnell, I have as he was a British soldier. Here it is. Um, 97, the, the Admiral William Fitzroy in the 1800s. And I'm sure I, I will do another past life about him, like who else he could have been. But there is, if you look at that video on my channel, watch that. Fitzroy was like an odious, odious person. <laughs> and there's, there is a portrait of Fitzroy and he looks very similar to McConnell, so. Okay, yeah. okay. Just, um, yeah. And, and someone right. just said they were born with very large cysts, Linda Ann, very large cysts on my forehead which I feel is a past life death trauma. Do you think this might've occurred because I reincarnated so quickly after death? I don't think it would have been that, honestly. I think, you know, also I wanna say that time is different over there. Their time is not temporal time. It's not related to having right. an organic body. Or, right. So time is, it, 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 there's time there, I believe, but it's, it's different. It's not based on what we base time on. Okay, because um, 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 I there was a show that talked that went and followed people to their where they were before young children that have specific, and lots of times even bullet wounds it'll leave a mark on the body like a mole or something. Oh yeah, um, I I that definitely could be from a past life. I, I again, it's so personal. I would have to ask the guides about her. Um, but um, it could be, uh, uh, those things can definitely happen. Yes. Okay, this is an interesting story. <laughs> in a past life, could you have been an animal like an elephant or a whale? I will ask the guides about that. I know the Buddhists do believe that, right? Uh -huh. That um, uh, there's a story about a goat. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 uh, um, a Buddhist um, uh, priest who became a goat after sacrificing a goat or something like that. Now that is probably the wrong story, but it's something like that, but let's see. Oh, he spared a goat from being sacrificed because the goat told him that um, he, he was the reincarnation of this goat. I think that was it. Okay, let me ask my guides here. They're saying no. No, okay. That humans um, are from, it's, it's a, a different, different soul realm. matrix yeah. than animals. That animals have souls, animals reincarnate, animals you know, cross over to the light. They're waiting for you when you cross over, when, if they've passed, but they, they say no on that one. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say this out loud, Teresa Emmerman, you wrote, and I don't think you would be able to answer this, but I want her to write me at grindle9103 at comcast.net. And we'll put it on the show to answer this. She said, uh, I love you both. Thank you very much. My question is, my husband was the last person in his age range anyone would have expected to die. Yet almost a year ago, I found him lifeless in our living room, in our living room one morning. Due to COVID, they would not do an autopsy. What was the cause of his death? Does Alan have a message for me? That's more my thing. That's my meaning. Okay. So you can't really, you're doing past lives. So. Well, I, I do do that kind of mediumship, Linda. Oh, you do? Yeah, because I don't just do past lives in my readings. I, thought I, you I were read just on. Doing it. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Can, I read on can anything. Answer this woman, what yeah, is? You can, let's both answer it. Okay. Uh, no, I, I read on, I always say this at the end of my channel. I read on, um, uh, past lives, anything in the present, including a future and past. I'm a medium. 
and I, I do help cross people over and I love to introduce people to their guardian angels. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so let's see. His name is uh, Alan. Yeah. She didn't say how old he was. Uh, his name is Alan. I'm kind of getting heart attack. That's what I'm feeling too. Yeah. I just felt like he, he actually wasn't feeling that good. So I don't know if he was noticing and he's like, bah, I'm bug. You know how men are. It was just uh, an he, overwhelming he, event. He just said, no, he's fine. He's doing this. Tell her I'm fine. Tell her I'm fine. Because what's driving her nuts is not knowing the reason why. And I, I think it's like, a, yeah. I just feel like it just a boom. He like the widow makers. They didn't do an autopsy, but they would have found he had a massive coronary. Yes. Uh, he wants her to know that he's doing fine. And he's so sorry because that was horrible for her to find him like that. Oh. Yeah. Getting anything? <laughs> yeah. I, I, he wants to say, to sense his love. And he's so happy there. They're always happy there. <laughs> oh my God. But just the energy, the beauty of that place. And he's like, he watches over her. He's worried about her because I feel like energetically, and this happens to a lot of people, but it, really she couldn't even feel herself for a long time. She, she's out of her body. He's saying she's alive, but she's not with the living kind of energy. So he worried about that. But she, yes, she, the hard part for her is she'd like to make sense out of this. Why? And it feels like it was his time to go. Yeah. And he's uh, saying I, her I, life is not over. Her life is not over. It was his time to go. Yeah. And it was just something it, yeah, it was, it was, you know, um, as you know, meant to be, it was the time that was chosen and he wants her to know that he, he's always with her. Yeah. And he loves her. Oh, it was he a loves good marriage. Her, yeah. that, that I know. And he's sorry, but he's more sorry that he died. So he would have preferred to stay, but now that he's over there, he's in pure, wonderful love. It's vibrating love. He's almost yes. transparent when I look at him. It's, but, it's just bliss, so much happiness um, just in that. Energy. Yeah. And yeah. then when she found the body, I could see him over there and he's trying to tell her, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay. But she was just like, oh. yeah, right in the middle of COVID. I don't see him dying of COVID. I feel it was a heart attack. I think he, I, I, he was saying be in life to her. Yeah. That's, that's what I heard. Part. A lot of people will, they, it's like they stop living when that person dies. And it's like, why do you stop living? I want you to keep alive so I can vicariously be happy for you and know that everything's okay. They always say to me, tell them I'm more alive now than when I had a body. Yes. <laughs> so this is a good one. And I deal with this a lot. SW, in relation to severe anxiety and fear, can this be a holdover from a past life? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. You know, like um, people who have fear of heights, mm -hmm. uh, a phobia. It's it's all it's so often that they died from a high place, fell off a right. building or a cliff or something like that. My daughter used to be totally paranoid to cross a bridge. Did she? So you think past life she died well, on a something bridge? Something must have happened because she was really afraid. Yeah. Yeah, or fear of water, or and and the generalized anxiety and um, foreboding definitely, definitely from past lives. I'm not. I, I mean, I it can be because you know things can happen in this life too, obviously. But yeah, that can definitely can be a holdover. Well, I think a lot of soldiers and people who were in bombed cities, people who lived with fight or flight and all that unbelievable trauma, when they take another body, that's that, that anxiety lingers in them. Yes, it does. They need to, re and that's what karma, karma is always ask asking us to resolve past karma. Right. And to come to a higher understanding uh, of, about our life and what life is and who we really are as souls on this planet. It's just our evolutionary journey. Right. And, and there's people that have, especially children that have night terrors. You can't tell me that's not part of another life. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So highly, uh, there's a high potential for that. Yes. Did you, Peace on Earth is asking, did you ever look at Eva Braun? 
I, I was just thinking of Eva Braun yesterday, for God's sake. Um, I haven't yet, but I will. Yeah, you got to have slice to do. We're going to look at somebody else. Um, Ivanka, that's going to be interesting. I think I did, to tell you the truth, I think in an early video, I did see two past lives with Ivanka and Jared. And Jared was the female and Ivanka was the male in one of those lives. I th I'm just, it was, a, it was several years ago, but I uh, would like to do just a past life on Ivanka. Uh, I, you know, more recent one maybe than that. Okay. And Ivanka was more dominant. <laughs> Jared was more uh, effeminate or, or feminine. Um, okay. Um, somebody said, I try to pass life regression, which we don't do. And at first I was in a dark place and couldn't see anything. The women performing the regression moved me beyond this and I could see things again. Could the dark place be what is blocking my progress? Is there a way to work beyond it? Well, I think either with Linda or I, we would just ask our, our spirit guides and they would show us the life that you wouldn't have to be regressed. You wouldn't have to go into that place. We, we, we would be giving you the information. So you, you don't have to uh, be in that vulnerable situation. Not that there's anything wrong with past life regression. And I'm sure that, that it's really uh, beneficial. But if there's a fear, then getting a past life reading from somebody who can just ask your spirit guides and look into the Akashic records for you, a lot easier. You're just going to get the information. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is a good one. Why do we, Kimberly, why do we choose to reincarnate? Are we ever made to reincarnate as a form of punishment? Oh, I saw that. I'm going to ask my guides about that. Okay. That's an interesting question. I think that's um, some of these questions, you know, they're, they're multidimensional. There's not just one answer. So that was one of the ones that I saw. And I thought, oh, there's different aspects to that. So there are some people who are forced to reincarnate, but I'm not going to say punishment because punishment is a judgment. And not that there, sh there shouldn't be punishment for crimes. I believe that there, there should right. be, but it's more- That's not how it works over there though. Um, it, it, it's always about what I was talking about before, I think, which is illumination, enlightenment, understanding yourself, who, why, what pushed you, what pushes humans to dark acts. I, I am always uh, fascinated. I have been since a child uh, um, regarding serial killers and true crime. I, I always wondered about that because I wanted to understand the human soul and I wanted to understand human darkness. What drives people to these unfathomable things? So I, I believe that we're given all these opportunities. I don't think they're infinite really, but for people who go to the dark side and have lives where, where they've done intense uh, harm, there are opportuni opportunities to learn, but people have free will. And so if, if let's say Putin, right? He has an opportunity to learn in this lifetime. If he really was Adolf Hitler in his last lifetime, but he's not choosing to do that. He's choosing to double down, but, the, but he, he had an opportunity. So I think karma, you know, uh, d divine consciousness, the, the, the laws of uh, spiritual laws of evolution and, and, and uh, evolution of consciousness, especially as we're going into this new age, right? right. Um, these are opportunities, but, but whether or not we take them, that's our choice. And yes, some of those opportunities do involve suffering uh, and a, a difficulty, but there, there is this interim in between lifetimes where we look at all our lifetimes with our spirit guides I, I envision it like a, that big movie theater in, in, in the sky where we're kind of sitting with our guides and um, other, maybe the other angels and looking at, not just looking at it from our point of view, but I do believe that we go into their bodies, the, the people that we have interaction with, like we, we get to see things from everybody else's point of view. So we're um, uh, expanding our empathy and our um attachment we're we're not expanding but we're trying to really get into perspective our own ego that you know blocks so many things to understand things from another perspective so that we can have a, a more compassion and uh awareness and 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 sympathy for for other people and um because you never know like you like what is that saying um walk a mile in somebody else's shoes right 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 
And then we have that information and we make these plans and craft this next lifetime with how it's going to go down to be able to address the, some of those things, things we want to work on, uh, relationships that we want to heal, or even if it's not healing a relationship, breaking free of abusive relationships. Exactly. Well, where we, we come in and end up, you know, victimized. It, it's very empowering to, to come out that other end and break off a, a negative relationship and, you know, find that warrior in you. That's a karmic lesson. That's an evolutionary lesson. Uh, but, uh, but once we get on the karmic train, we can't get off that train voluntarily we can't, I, 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 until we fully evolve. So if you're incarnating and you then become, you know, like go, then there are, there are people I believe who really go to the dark side and, you know, like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that, that, that dark satanic or the demonic energy or whatever that is. And then they carry that into lifetimes. I've seen that yeah, uh, in, yeah. into people, they still That's have opportunities, Yeah, but um, that, that energy could really just take, take their, personality to, to the void so they may not uh, get infinite chances to reincarnate but every but we're all one we're all uh, I believe we're all trying to perfect our individual uh, evolutionary souls and and our oversoul that our collective soul but because of free will <laughs> we some of us choose to move forward and some of us choose not to and there's a, I, I, as I, I find myself as I'm ex explaining this, like there's so much mystery in this, and there's so much I want to yeah. know about it. And we but want this to is, I think, over there. Yeah, this is where I've come so far in terms of thinking about that particular question. I, and we, all, you know, we all have input on that in terms of our own um, perspective. But I do believe that there's this interim period of time where we're deciding what we want to address. And when we come back into this lifetime, all those things are set up for us to address those lessons. Unfortunately, I think there's a glitch in this plan because I think we can be over eager when we're yeah. not incarnated. We think we can just take on all this stuff and then we, we incarnate and go, oh my God, why did I take I on all this stuff? I can't deal with this. What was I thinking? Right, so that, right. I think that's a little glitchy. Um, that happens. But, J but Jaxel said, are ancestors always blood relatives from our current life or can they be people we met or related to in past lives? Well, we already addressed that at the beginning. Uh, oh, they can right. be the latter. I, uh, right. the latter. <laughs> I have intense neck pain and migraines from this injury. I was told I, was, I had given some food to a slave or peasant and we were both hung for it. Can you please verify? Do you want me to, or you want to take that or do you want me to? Well, uh, if you, a lot of people with bad neck pain were hung before. I can even see sometimes with people walking, oh, he was hung in a past life. I think Kosar was hung in a past life. Was what? Kosar was hung in a past life. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I think he was. And yeah. he's not well anyway, but I just feel that. Okay. Okay, so... Being that we don't know Jamie where they're located or anything, um, I think it's true. I think that the, this person was hung and unjust, justly hung, and that's yeah, why it sticks with them because it's like, why did you do this to me? I didn't deserve to die. Maybe it was a lynching. Yeah. Oh, you saw lynching? Yeah. That too, or or. Yeah. Do you think that's not the past life? It wasn't. No, I think that life. is. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think I just think it was it was a kind of a lynching when this person was hung. This is a good one. Electra Storm asks, I have a weird, but I guess funny question. Insects like ants, roaches and rats, are they in heaven like our pets are? Oh, yeah, they have a soul, too. All things do. You know what I was told? No. There's butterflies but, and there's certain, but like ants and flies, they're not there. Not in that realm. That you mean, I, I, I get that. Um, 
<laughs> you know what they're telling me? What? What? We don't have to agree about everything. They're saying yeah. ticks and um ticks. Yeah. And please don't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but that they're saying that um they are, but it's not even that. It, it, I think they, 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 it's just another dimension of soul could imprint. Be, could be. Could I think that's what it is. Dimension. Yeah. Because I've read a lot of books of people who died and come back and why they were there. They just, they, I think I had that one happen when I met Jesus. It's unbelievably beautiful. The colors are brighter, the, everything is just gorgeous. And the, the wind is soft. Everything is beautiful, the smell. But um, they said that when they were over there, the one thing that's not there is insects. So that always stuck in my mind. But then insects wouldn't be in the same vibrational form anyway over there as they are here. Because this is, a, you know, he, Earth is like this, you know, certain biosphere uh, of ecological relationship and mosquitoes and all the um, the majority of insects. I still don't understand why ticks exist or why right, exist. or mosquitoes. But and, yeah, mosquitoes I, I do understand because they're food. Yeah, I know mosquitoes are food for bats. But um, uh, uh, even if let's say even if they're the soul, and I think that insects it, it reincarnate like really really quickly. Like they're they don't hang around. They're not like like humans and uh, on that other side. They would just reincarnate and reincarnate very, very quickly. But um, maybe they're in a, just a different vibrational aspect to things. They wouldn't necessarily bite you up there. I mean, that wouldn't even make any sense. So right, right. They might even be that's in a good the question though. Huh? Yeah, that's good. Hey, listen. Um, so uh, should we do one more question? Yeah, one more is fine. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, let's find you. Did you ever look at Clark Gable? I did not. I did not. I'll, I'll do that a, another time. What did you want to know if he'd reincarnated or, um, or did, did you, or somebody, was it a question that somebody else asked? I don't remember. Someone, someone else asked. I don't get he's reincarnated. You don't get it right now, right now. Not right now. No. Taking a nice rest. There, there, there is a question somebody really wanted us to address. What? Um, it was about fairies and elves. Oh yeah, let's look at that. And I love fairies and elves. I've, I've, they, they, I believe they exist. I believe I, I mean, I see them. Uh, they're in a different vibrational plane. So what the question was was, would they be as affected by what's going on with Gaia, the vibrations of Gaia, as we are? Oh, that's why I didn't ask it out loud because I don't know Gaia. <laughs> That is the earth. It's the earth, the soul of the earth. Oh, okay. Um, and my guides say, yes, they are. They Because they're all connected with nature. They're, they all have uh, uh, responsibilities and uh, the things that they do with nature. They're, they're like connected with, with taking care of different aspects of the earth. You know, various flowers and plants, the elves are um the like stones and uh the, like uh, the, the the soil and they're, they're more like the the the, na the nature of the health of the the forests yeah. so they're they're all part of, of of beings who are essential in various like dimensional aspects of of gaia of, of the earth and they are of course concerned about what's going on with Gaia and climate change and, and all of that, but oh, yeah. I, the other aspect of them. So not to worry about them. If people are worried about them in the, in the way that they may die or something like that, because they exist on another dimension. Okay. They don't exist in our dimension. They can come into our dimension. Usually I see them as sparkling lights. I know there are people who will see them. I, I, I met Especially a woman my Irish friends. I have a Yeah, lot I met a woman who saw a fairy just sitting on a rock. Huh? Yeah, and I have a, a woman I read today that really is enthralled with all this. And she said, even in Norway, they have to go through uh, a fairy person that can read really? and before they build anything to make sure they're not interrupting the space of the fairies. Oh, I know that in Ireland, they will, uh, like if they have to build a, build a freeway, right. they will 
totally circumvent it around like a, a fairy right, mill right. or a fairy right. grove. Yeah. Maybe she said Ireland, but I, she said Norway too. Well, Ireland. Norway and, and also I believe um, uh, Iceland. Oh, Iceland too? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's this great movie with Will Ferrell called Eurovision. I love this movie so much, but they address that. And if, if anybody really wants to just take their mind off Rittenhouse and just get into like a much better space, Eurovision. Watch okay, Eurovision. I'll, 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 I can't do it today, but I'll probably do it tomorrow. It's fantastic. I, <laughs> it's met, really I already got tickets for me and my sons to see. Uh, I know this is going to sound crazy. Um, Ghostbusters. The new one. Oh, the, the new one, yeah. I'm looking so forward to that. I love that, <laughs> Ghostbusters. So, all right, sweetie. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I always love being on your show. It's wonderful. And I, yeah, I love well, connecting with you. We got to do this again soon. Yes, let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. Maybe in, in between, I'll have done Ivanka's test. <laughs> and maybe even around the holidays, because I'll be just chillaxing. Oh, yeah, me too. Do you want to do it around? the holiday start? Hanukkah um oh the, the, next week but i don't i i'm fine i celebrate the solstice so oh, okay do you want to do it around i was going to tell you happy hanukkah but anyway. oh thank you thank you um did you want to do it around the uh, christmas time christmas sounds great yeah let's do I'm it i'm not going anywhere i'll be chillaxing <laughs> you and i can sit down in our in our new christmas pajamas <laughs> christmas pajamas <laughs> and we can talk about goodwill to others so that sounds fantastic. Uh, were you saying like, uh, what, do you, what are you going to get? What kind of Christmas pajamas are you going to get? I don't know. I just said that. I love pajamas. So Somebody Christmas on Twitter pajamas said, sounds fantastic. everybody take, get out your ugly Christmas sweaters. I wish I had one. <laughs> okay, anyway. thank you so much, Linda. We should thank we'll you. talk about it before it happens. Maybe we should get some jammies. Some... But the thing is, the way this is, you can't really see them. No, you can't. <laughs> okay, sweetie. Okay, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, love you, Linda.